everyone, and welcome to the VitaCast, episode 50. Yes, we made it to episode 50. This is awesome. But anyways, <laughs> that would be Kyle. How's it going, Kyle? It's going, darling. It's going. It's crazy to think that we've hit 50 episodes. I know, man. It's been over a year because I think we started, what, October 10th, something like that. Yes, sir. So it's been over a year, but still, 50, 50. I can't believe we made it. I know, especially with you on the here. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, I said that. Loud. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing about you, Tyler, so that's okay. You mean it? I do mean it. <laughs> You're too kind. I know. From the bottom of my heart, my friend. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, it's awesome that we've done this, and it's all for you guys, and of course, our lovely little handheld that we love so much. <laughs> but anyways... Speaking of that lovely little handheld, let's talk about some of the stuff that we've been playing on that handheld. Um, for me, it's still Freedom Wars. I'm doing the review for that, and I am actually currently on what I think, I could be wrong, but what I think is the final mission. So I will be pushing that review out hopefully sometime this week. And if not, Kyle can slap me in the face. Aw, uh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I've been playing that. Uh, I played a little bit of The Wolf Among Us. Um, I've already played Episode 1 back when it came out on PS3, but I stopped playing when I heard it was coming to the Vita, so I'm happy that it's finally out on the Vita, so I'm going to push through that hopefully sometime. Who knows, because I just also got Tales of Hearts R, but I haven't played it yet. It's sitting there. I'm looking at it right now. I, look at it. I'll do it again. I think I did this last week or the week before when Freedom Wars came out, but listen to this. Yep. <laughs> yep, that's Tales of Hearts R right there. <laughs> Anyways, um, what else did I play? I played some. Oh, no, I didn't play that. I played the Binding of Isaac Reaper. That's what I played. Um, just a little bit of it. Uh, just like uh, the Wolf Among Us. I haven't played much of it. Uh, I've just been grinding a ton in Freedom Wars, getting new guns and whatnot, upgrading those weapons, making my guy much more badass. Um, but yeah, other than that, not much else. What about you, Kyle? Well, Tyler, I pretty much just dug into Sword Art Online this week. Oh, boy. Um, I was looking to get that game done so I could get that review out, and it'll be out in the next few days at the latest. It will probably be out somewhere around when this podcast comes out. So nice. if you're hearing my voice, check the site. <laughs> um, to finally hear my thoughts, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was it was crazy, and um, I was kind of rushing, but not rushing. I don't know. It's it, it's hard to kind of explain how I went about, you know, prioritizing my run through. Um, yeah. But I wanted to definitely get to the end of the Ironcrad area and uh, have explored enough that I, you know, had a good handle on the game and stuff. Yeah. How and, many hours did you put into it? I, I don't know, man, like 70 or something like that. And like, <laughs> and I mean, and yeah, that's not, that's not even like complete, complete. I think I have 40% of the trophies. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot more to do and, and really like just playing the game and, and having fun with it to its maximum. I could see this being a 250 hour game. So. Wow, so definitely got your money's worth. <laughs> definitely got my money's worth, um, especially since it's a review copy. <laughs> for us average Joes, like myself, who've had to pay for it. <laughs> well, yeah, like, I mean, there's not many games that you can pay, you know, even if you're paying the full digital price of, I think it's thirty nine ninety nine in the U.S. Um, there's not many games that you can pay $40 for, for and play for, you know, 250 hours or... Even if you're just one of those per people that get to the end of the story and the end of, you know, all the bosses and all that kind of stuff, um, 70 to 100 hours or more, depending on how fast you go through the game, I guess. So, yeah. Like, I mean, there's, there's just so much content there. <laughs> and, and like, I mean, it has some flaws. The translation is. Probably the best. It, it, yeah, it's, it's not so much the translation as it is the English that they use. It's like um, the the words are, are understandable, but they don't make sense grammatically and kind of just the way that they string the words together. So 
like you can you can always get a sense of what the person's trying to say, but it's just not you know the same flow as normal speeches. So yeah. it's it, it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes. But I didn't have any trouble understanding just. Trouble so understanding the why they didn't use an editor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's unfortunate, but yeah. hopefully the next one, last song, will address that issue like they said they will. Yeah, hopefully. And uh, I think now that they know that, you know, it's probably coming west and they've already announced the English um, translation for Asia, that yeah. they're probably going to do a better job this time. Yeah. All right. Anything else you play? Well, that was my main main focus, but um, I couldn't help to get in a little bit of. I played some Samurai Kagura um, Shinobi verses, just kind of screwed around trying to max out a couple different things for some last minute trophies, kind of. Nice. Um, and I played a little bit of Tales of Hearts R, but really not too much. I mean. I was, I was really trying to get that sort of line done. And now that I finished that finally, actually, yesterday, um, now I can finally dig into everything else because I have Tales of Hearts and I have Senran Kigura Bon Appetit. So <laughs> I'm going to be a busy man as I yes. have been. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> all right. So that's all? Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Nice. So many games, and they're all awesome games <laughs> they are they are uh, anyways so we got our reviews to worry about but there's already reviews that have come out so what would those be Kyle alright well, we've got three reviews that went up on the site this week uh, first up we've got Minutes which was reviewed by Charlie and he gave it a 3.8 over to 5 saying that Minutes is a game that challenges and stimulates whilst being both simple in premise but difficult to master. Be prepared to lose not only minutes, but hours to this game as you try to master the moving shapes. So it looks like he thought it was better than average and something worth checking out, so you might want to go read his review on the site. Next up, we've got Brad's review of Nidhogg, which Tyler and I also played and had a ball with in <laughs> multiplayer. Um, yes. Yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy <laughs> awesome. <laughs> We're going to definitely have to do that again. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a lot of fun. And uh, Brad had to say about Nidhogg. Nidhogg is a wild and frantic fighting game that takes gameplay to the extreme. It's a or its ultra retro graphics provide a unique look that stands out in a crowd. The game shines as a local multiplayer fighter, but drops dead when it comes to the single player campaign. So, I haven't personally dug in too hard to the single player campaign, but I can attest to the fact that the multiplayer is awesome, <laughs> and so can Tyler. So, yes. check out that review and check out that game. It's not very expensive, and it's not very big at all. I think it's like 83 megabytes or something. Yeah, it's really small. Did you say the score? I don't know if you said the score. I thought I did. Three and a half out of five, if I didn't. So... We'll find out when I edit. I'll laugh at myself if you actually did say it. But I'll call you out. If I didn't, that's possible. Who knows? <laughs> Anyways. You never know. Continue. <laughs> All right. And our third review of the week is Tiny Troopers Join Ops from Paul. He gave it a 3.5 out of 5, saying, Great value and a lot of fun. It's worth buying for the zombie mode alone, let alone the two campaigns. If you're looking for some miniaturized military action, you really can't go wrong. So... Looks like he's giving that one a score that's slightly above average as well, so you may want to check that out if you're interested. Awesome. More games. <laughs> and More good games, Tyler, not yeah. just games, because, I mean, there's some shit out there. <laughs> there, there is, definitely. <laughs> In all those reviews, uh, we've got a ton more games that we're going to have to be reviewing soon. Uh, so we're going to throw it to those new releases with either myself, Kyle, Paul, the crazy lady, um, the little kid. Uh, who else do we got? I don't know who else we got doing our new releases. Know. It's always a mystery. We could just walk down the street and find people. Like, I mean, maybe that's how we do it, Kyle. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. They really don't. They don't. So yeah, let's, let's throw it on to those new releases. 
Hello all, it's Charlie here from the Elite Lounge, bringing you this week's store releases about North America and Europe. So to start with, in North America we've get, get Off My Lawn, which is a free-to-play title launching onto the store this week. Alongside that is Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham, which will be $29.99. Retro City Rampage DX, which is $9.99 or $7.99 if you got PlayStation Plus. Ring Run Circus, which is also $9.99 or $7.99 if you have Plus. There's a Saint Rankin Gera Bon Appetit, which will be $14.99, and Tales of Hearts are, which is $39.99. There's also a lot of DLC for some of those titles, like Get Off My Lawn and Saint Rankin Gera and Tales of Hearts are, with sales on both of the Sonic Rivals PSP games, which are now $3.50 or $2.79 if you have PlayStation Plus, and Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed, which is $14.99 or $11.99 with your Plus discount. Moving on to Europe. We've got Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham, which releases on Friday, um, the 14th, at £34.99 or €39.99. €39, Euros 99, sorry. Um, there's Nidhogg, which will be £11.99 or 20% off if you've got PlayStation Plus. Uh, Retro City Rampage DX, which has also got a 20% plus discount, and that is £7.99 or €9.99. Euros 99. There is Sinanka Go Bon Appetit, which is £11.99 or €14.99. Euros. Shakespeare's, which is free to play. And again, Tales of Hearts are releases, which is £34.99 or €39.99. Now in Europe, again, there's quite a lot of DLC available. So A Keeper's Trip, Get Off My Lawn, Sonic Agora, Shakespeare's and Tales of Hearts are. And just for sales in Europe, there is a notable one to look for with Killzone Mercenary, which is now £6.99 or €9.99. If so you haven't got that yet, I suggest you get it on board at that price. But that's it for this week. Thanks, guys. Bye now. Thank you, Rainer Person Off The Street, for those new releases. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of games, Kyle. Um, you were talking about Sinran Kugura, Bon Appetit, and Tales of Hearts are. Any else you're gonna, anything else you're gonna get? Um, I don't think so. Why not? I mean, <laughs> there's, there's some stuff there that I know people are definitely gonna be interested in. Just nothing that really jumps out at me. I mean, if something goes on sale, there's always a chance that I'll, I'll jump in, but, uh, from what's there, like, I mean, for North America, we have Retro City Rampage DX, Ring Run Circus, Lego Batman 3, and Get Off My Lawn, which is a horrible-looking free-to-play game. <laughs> um, so, like, I mean, none of those are really my style, so I'll, I'll probably stick with Senra and Kagura on Tales of Hearts. But, I mean, Retro City is, you know, a... Uh, a pretty well lauded game and this is a upgraded version I guess of that and uh, you know people are going to latch onto those Lego games even if this one is you know one of the bad ones because I know that he has some bad ones and uh, yeah. Ring Run Circus is, looks interesting as well so that, that'll probably get some, some buys as well but uh, I mean not for me <laughs> I feel you That's, I just totally forgot I always forget a game. I played Ring Run Circus because I got an early copy of it from the Very nice. So what did you I, think of it? It's definitely not for me. <laughs> it's a mobile game. It's it's definitely for cell phones. Um, I mean, you cl- it has that kind of same feel as most mobile games where um, collect collect three stars and you go to the next level. Collect three stars, go to the next level. Collect three stars. That kind of same repetitive collect these things, go to the next level. Um, but I, I don't know. I made a video of it on my YouTube channel, and I, I don't know if I'll go back to it. It just was not something I would pay for. But it's not expensive. So, I mean, if you're looking for just a cheap little fun little game to play that can waste some time, there you go. It's a brain teaser kind of puzzler. But, but yeah, go check my video if you if you haven't any clue what it is. <laughs> um, get off my lawn. I it's free, so I might download it and give it a shot. But I might look at the screenshots first before I jump into it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I saw I saw somebody post a review on NeoGaf um, in the uh, PSN GAF thread, and they were like. Zero out of ten. What the hell is this game? This is a piece of shit or something like that. It's like <laughs> it was pretty much a a, a well worded paragraph about how shit the game was. So Interesting. yeah, I, I think I'm going to avoid at all costs. <laughs> it's getting a four point one six on Davida's rating system right now. 
I have no idea. Maybe it's all the developers of the game reading it. I, I don't know. But, yeah. um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It looks like it looks, a knockoff. It looks bad. It, it's, I don't know. No. Yeah. It looks <laughs> like no. a Plants vs. Zombies knockoff. But, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's free to play. I would. I don't know if I want to have it on my trophy list and then not be able to get any of the trophies because it's like unbelievably hard to get a trophy or something. <laughs> Maybe I just won't do it. And then uh, Retro City Rampage, I or DX. I have the original Retro City Rampage. It's awesome. I don't know if I'm gonna get this one because I just don't think there's enough for me to want to buy it, buy the game again. <laughs> um, and then Center Anchor Girl Bon Appetit. Maybe I think you are you reviewing it, Kyle? I am reviewing it, Tyler. I think I might wait for your review, see what you have to say about it. But well, it might be a little bit because I think there's I don't know if my review copy comes with it, but um a DLC pack that releases like the twenty eighth or something like that. Yeah. And that's like makes it the full game because it comes in like two pieces. Uh, so I might wait for that to do my review. Plus the fact that I have that and Tales of Hearts are and yeah. So yeah. Huh. <laughs> are you gonna play Katsuragi the whole time? I I, I don't know who I'm gonna play. Um Isn't that your favorite character? Yeah, it is. Uh I haven't decided yet though. Because oh, yeah. you never know. Like I mean she, she's my favorite character of the main characters, but I guess there's other people that I really like to play too, especially right. now that I've unlocked them all and kind of gone back and screwed with them. A lot of the <laughs> dirty, crim- Go on. yeah, a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the Crimson Squad um, members that you unlock are pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So I definitely need to play uh, Shinobi versus some more. You need to play all the games, Mortaler. All the I games. know. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. There's too many. <laughs> ah, anyways, so yeah, th- there's a lot of games coming out this week. So you should get. You guys should let us know what you're getting. Send us an email. Tweet at us. Whatnot. All that fun stuff. Uh, so let's head on to the news that we got. Uh, there's 15 pieces. So let's push through it. 14, Tyler. 14. Yeah. Oh no. I cut one out, but it's okay. You're all good. Uh oh. What? <laughs> I don't know. So mine's still good. <laughs> you're all good. You're all good. It was before um, I sent you your list. So. All right. Well, I'm reading your list, <laughs> and if it's uh, messed up, that's all on you. <laughs> no, it's just that uh, it's just two at the end instead of three at the end for you. So awesome. All right. Less. <laughs> <laughs> Less is more, Tyler. Less is more. I said that earlier today. That's weird. I was reading your mind. That's <laughs> oh, God. What am I about to say? You are about to say, let's get on with the news, Tyler. Wrong. <laughs> let's head to the news, people. <laughs> 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 All right. So first up, Sam Mullen, the North American localization producer for Hatsune Miku Project Diva series, took to the North American PlayStation blog to explain a lift about the DLC for the Western release of the title, which is set for release in North America on the 18th of November and the 21st in Europe. For those of you that don't know Hatsune Miku yet, she is a world, she is the world's most popular virtual singer and our Project Diva rhythm game series lets you play along with her most iconic music on your PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. The game also offers a variety of game modes and customization options because with Hatsune Miku, it's all about creativity, user created content and Great music. Uh, if any of you out there are keeping tabs on Japan, you may be aware that they are having a regular releases of post-launch downloadable content for the Japanese version of the game. And she's happy to announce that uh, we are going to be offering the same da- downloadable content to the Western fans. And yes, all the content that Japan has been getting, such as new costume modules like Rin and the Lens Alpacas... Alparka, Alparkas, and new rhythm game songs like Look This Way, Baby, A- Aikotoba, and Seki Renum Graffiti. You're all going to get that, too. Uh, we'll be releasing content every two weeks or so for nearly six months straight. That's pretty cool. Uh, the title will offer three types of DLC, which are 
UI skins free for the first 39 days after release. Costume modules, $199 uh, each. Rhythm game songs, which are $299 each. And Sega has also announced two sales offers, the Song Club and Costume Club, delivering an, a deal for six months of costume, skin, and song content following the game's launch. Fans who purchase the Song Club for $29.99 will receive every single Rhythm Game song published in the upcoming months, well over 10 songs in total, while the Costume Club, damn, that's expensive, $69.99. Uh, will feature more than 45 costume modules. The Costume Club and Song Club offer more than 25% savings for fans who want to own every piece of upcoming content. That's a lot of money. Um, so are you looking forward to the game? Hatsune Miku Project EBF 2nd is the sequel to the ultimate rhythm game featuring the world's most popular virtual singer with 20 classic songs from the previously Japan-only PSP games making their first debut in the West and 20 brand new songs to the Project EBF series. In addition to the new songs, the game will feature updated gameplay mechanics and controls, more than 80 brand new and remade fan favorite modules, cross-save compatibility, markerless AR mode for PlayStation Vita, and a revamped edit mode ranking system that showcases the most popular user-generated content. Whew, that was a long one. Anyways, next up, it has been revealed that upcoming PlayStation Vita title, the regular Magic High School Out of Order, will feature crossover costumes from Sword Art Online. Yes, that will be available for characters Tatsuya and Miyuki to wear. Revealed in Dengeki Online, uh, costumes below will feature in the regular, irregular at Magic High School. And those of Kirito and Asuna from Sword Art Online. Details on how you will be able to get a hold of these costumes will be announced at a later date. Uh, also revealed were a few new CGs from the game which show the practical battle special class and events that could occur in the game. These events often involve girls flirting with Tatsuya with other with another CG showing a training session with Erika. The regular at Magic High School Out of Order is set uh, to release... In Japan on December 25th. Next up, over the past month we have brought you a bundle of news regarding Bandai Namco Games' upcoming God Eater 2 expansion, Rage Burst. A few weeks ago we informed you that the RPG will be released in Japan on February 19th, 2015, and now Famitsu has revealed further details on awesome new additions. The first of a new character who interestingly doesn't seem to have any eyebrows. Weird. Aside from the lack of facial hair, this new character goes by the name of Isaac Fieldman and is uh, the director of Administration Bureau of Information Management at FENRA, the organization assigned to destroy the origami beasts. Uh, the next edition is that of a new origami. This new monster attacks with its sharp claws and by using its ability to engulf an area in blue flames. Uh, to add it to its sinister look, it wears a cape and floats. Lastly, new elements to existing game features have been announced. Camp scenes will be added to the free DLC survival missions from the original game and allow you to relax, prepare for future fights, and chill with your teammates between battles. Spending more time with your team will allow you to craft their abilities to your liking by using the new personal ability system. This is done by gaining ability points, which are acquired by bringing your companions on missions. This allows your teammates to gain new abilities and will increase your team's overall power. Uh, once again, there's still no news on a Western release of God Eater 2 Rage Burst, but we shouldn't give up hope completely as the original God Eater was only released in the West when the expansion was included. So hopefully that gets announced, because I want this game. Yeah, we want all the games, Tyler. All of them. And the Rage Burst. That's why our best blogs are huge. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, moving on. This week's Famitsu has revealed new gunplay that will be playable in the upcoming PlayStation Vita title Gundam Breaker 2. The newcomers that are revealed are Dual Gundam and Blitz Gundam from Gundam Seed. Dual Gundam is highly versatile with all parts usable across the board, while Blitz Gundam can use a Mirage Colloid cloaking system to evade enemies. Releasing in Japan on December 18th, Famitsu has also revealed a range of firearms that will be available in Gundam Breaker 2. These include a rifle, double rifle, machine gun, long rifle, Gatling gun, and a big Zika. That's all we have on Gundam Breaker 2 for now, but we'll be sure to bring you any further news on the game as and when it happens. 
And Devolver Digital has announced on Twitter that Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition will release in January for the PlayStation Vita. At Devolver Digital on Twitter wrote, quote, Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition is hitting PS3 and Vita January 13th in North America and January 14th in Europe, end quote. Accidentally released in Europe last week for a brief period, it looks like the Duke will be back officially in the new year, so save those pennies if you're looking to kick ass and chew bubblegum all over again. And the debut game from brand new indie developer Spiky Fish Games was recently announced on the PlayStation blog. Sketchcross is a logic puzzle game based on the nonogram puzzles, which are something of a mix between crosswords and Sudoku. By filling in coordinates on a grid from the number-based clues given to you along the side axis, you eventually reveal a picture. The game launched with 50 puzzles, starting at 5x5 five five size grids, going all the way up to 30x30. 30 30. Along with those 50 initial puzzles in normal mode, Frenzy mode is also available with endless, randomly generated puzzles in a time limit. Both modes will have a world and friend leaderboard, as well as uh, complete sketch cross puzzles and books of puzzles, resulting in unique trophies. Sketch Cross is also planned to get additional puzzle books after release. Sketch Cross is currently planned for an early 2015 release, exclusively on Vita. Next up, Koei Tecmo Europe has announced a final release date for Atelier Aisha Plus on their Twitter and Facebook feeds. At Koei Tecmo Europe posted... Atelier Aisha Plus for PlayStation Vita is coming on the 14th of January of 2015 on the PlayStation Store. Um, so, Atelier Aisha is the first game in the Atelier Desk series, which follows the young alchemist Aisha Altolga in search of, for her little sister, Nayo. As an enhanced part of the PlayStation 3 version, it contains some extra features and content such as new missions, bosses from Atelier Esha and Logi, new costumes and dual audio voiceovers. Atelier Aisha Plus, The Alchemist of Dusk, will be released digitally in North America on January 13th. Wait, oh, and in Europe on January 14th. Next up, Citizens of Earth pushed from its November release window to January. Publisher Atlas has announced that Citizens of Earth will now launch on all platforms January 20th, still going for $15 US and 12 euros, as we previously heard. And if you had no idea what Citizens of Earth is, Citizens of Earth is an RPG that places you in the shoes of the Vice President of the World. He's a classic bureaucrat, charming, charismatic, but practically useless. Being the bureaucrat you are, you don't actually want to get your hands dirty, thus you go about using your charisma to recruit normal townsfolk to help you investigate and fight your battles for you. Alrighty. Next up, we have the PlayStation Vita Heroes Mega Pack Bundle has been revealed via the European PlayStation blog. As the name suggests, the bundle comes with titles involving popular PlayStation heroes. There are five games in total, which are... Worms Revolution Extreme, the first game in the classic turn-based strategy series to come to PlayStation Vita, enjoy new features, beautiful graphics, and classic gameplay. We also have Ratchet and Clank, follow the wisecracking mechanic Ratchet and his robot sidekick Clank in their first adventure as they go from unwitting heroes to the baddest, baddie-blasting duo the universe has ever seen. Also, there's Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy, team up with the Deshing Hero and his sassy sidekick as they fight against dastardly outlaws. Lemmings Touch, control the fate of the lovable Lemmings using the PlayStation Vita touchscreen to assign them jobs and abilities. And Loco Roco, so get your Loco Roco on the move using simple tilting and jumping controls. Eat, grow, roll, and bounce through weird and wonderful environments as you solve puzzles, discover secret areas, and bump into crazy characters. As per usual with these Vita bundle packs, these titles will be downloadable via a voucher code through the PlayStation Store, with the basic pack adding an 8GB card for €39.99, Euros, and the full pack including a PlayStation Vita console as well for €199.99. Euros. 
Aside from the UK, the bundle will also be available in Ireland, Middle East, Spain, Portugal, Cyprus, Israel, Malta, Denmark, Norway, Hungary, Croatia, France, Bulgaria, and Russia. The bundle arrives November 19th, so if you're interested, there's not long to wait. And next up, developer Steel Wool Games reveals their fly swatting platformer will be arriving on Vita late November. In Fly Hunter Origins, you play as a clumsy spaceship janitor, Zack, an alien from the planet Burger, Burger Wall 3, whose dream is to become a legendary fly hunter. He works on the universe's most renowned fly hunter ship, which naturally is named the Frog. The game begins whilst the Frog's crew are in cryo sleep, when somehow the ship's precious cargo of rare insects are mysteriously jettisoned into space, eventually crash, really, crash landing on Earth. Blah. Um, as legendary fly hunters are in cryo sleep, it's up to Zack to save the day and swap his brush for an awesome fly swatter. It has been quiet on the Fly Hunter front over the past couple of months, but we finally have new details as developer Steel Wool Games and distributor Ripstone have revealed that their platformer will be landing on PlayStation Vita this month. The game was originally given a release window of summer 2014, but will be finally released within the next couple of weeks on the PlayStation Store for £4.99, $6.99, or €6.99. Euros. Though it is the debut title from Steel Wool Games, their team consists of artists with a combined total of 60 years' experience in the animation industry. Their credits include work on the animated Pixar classics Brave, The Incredibles, Toy Story, Monsters University, and Ratatouille, so expectations are high for the finished product. We'll keep you informed as this one plays out for release sometime later this month. And we get more in-depth information on Furyu's Yuki Yuna Wayushi Aru Memory of the Sea of Trees. Here's a story explanation from the post of Jumatsu. I really didn't want to butcher it in paraphrasing. So, quote, Yuna Yuki is a second-year student at Sanshu Middle School. She's a bright, colorful, and ordinary girl full of energy who belongs to the Hero Club, where everyone is always in high spirits. At the center of the club is Fu Inubozaki, a third-year student and Yuna's senior. The club's activities consist of things that benefit everyone, which can range from looking for a kitten's foster parents and helping out a nursery school. But the girls of the Hero Club have a real mission not known to regular people. In the forest, a space which ordinary people don't know of, the girls do battle against the mysterious beings known as the Vertex. Only the girls, the chosen heroes, can enter the forest to stop the enemy evasion and save mankind. Or so it was thought. Recently, conditions in the forest have gotten a little weird, and a space that was originally only meant for the girls and Vertex seemingly opens up to a mysterious new presence. End quote. Sounds interesting, right? Well, to get a better handle on how the game plays, they've also told us that it consists of two main parts, the action bits and the event bits. Action bits involve you picking a character and running freely around an open battlefield, defeating the enemy vertex and protecting the city. Your battle strength is determined by the bonds you forge with your partners. Event bits involve the everyday life of the members of the Hero Club, featuring an original story which was not included in the anime. This original story was supervised by the series' creator, Takihiro, and the anime company Studio Kumi and happens to include the same voice actors as the anime across over 70 different fully voiced scenes. Confirmed characters from the anime include Yuna Yuki, Memori Togo, Fu Inobazaki, Itsuki Inobazaki, and Karen Miyoshi. Coming in at a limited edition version featuring a drama CD, special booklet, bath poster, smartphone decorative decal, a changeable package jacket, and special packaging for 9,480 yen, which is approximately $83 US. The game will be available February 25th in Japan. Oh boy. Oh boy indeed. <laughs> Alright, last two pieces here. So, let's get to it. 
Dan Tisdale, one half on indie studio No Goblin, has taken to the EU blog to announce that their roundabout game is set to land on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita. He explains, quote, What's roundabout? It's a 70s B-movie game where you get to drive a constantly spinning limousine. As famed revolving limousine driver Giorgio Manos, you'll drive around the open world of Roundabout, picking up passengers, finding collectibles, competing in challenges, buying hats, and much more. We're using a cutting-edge, next-gen technique called full-motion video to recreate and render each passenger that rides in Giorgio's limo with lifelike accuracy, end quote. Uh, Dan said that the game will be cross by cross play, and really anything else that we can find that starts with the word cross. We will bring you more news on the game as we have it, but those that are heading to PlayStation Experience next month can get uh, some hands-on with Roundabout at the No Goblin booth. And Tyler is down for Roundabout cross-dressing. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> My computer almost just shut down with its automatic update. Ooh, that would have been funny. <laughs> that would have been funny. <laughs> My friend actually just told me that her and I should go to the PlayStation Experience, and I was like, I don't have money to go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it's only going to be like $300 a ticket. We could buy a plane ticket or just drive down there. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, if you want to pay for everything, sure. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways. Continuing on, <laughs> last story here. Uh, I'm sure you remember all the fuss from 1999 about the Y2K bug, right? Predicted to cause utter carnage with computer systems worldwide as soon as the date rolled over to 2000. You know what's scary, Kyle? What? There's probably people that might be listening to this that were not alive in 1999. Or 2000. That is, that is scary, Tyler. <laughs> so they might not know about all the fuss. Oh, we're old. Anyways, it has been become the inspiration of ACT Studios to develop a Japanese-style RPG based on the whole thing. Andrew Allison, Allison I'll, I'll just say it's Allison, the co-director from the studio explained a little more about the game on the North American blog. Quote, when an erratically behaving elevator claims the life of a young woman, unemployed Recent college graduate Alex Eggleston uh, takes to a primitive 1990s message board to find answers about the death of this stranger. His quest for answers leads to more questions as his research points him to a mysterious fan the internet has dubbed the Death Cab. End quote. Uh, citing inspiration from the Mother and Haruki Murakami series of games, Y2K is set to feature a 400-page script, a voice cast, cast which includes Chris Noisy, uh, Andrew Fayette, Fayette uh, Michael Laws, Melanie Ehrlich, Brittany Lauder, Anthony Sardine, and Clifford Chapin. I'm probably pronouncing all those last names terribly, so I apologize. As well as some unique gameplay elements. Uh, the most intriguing of these is the Mind Dungeon, in an area which you can all you can call upon quite literally that in order to beef your character up prior to a boss fight. As Andrew explains in more detail, quote, enemies can be seen on the map making contact and the enemy triggers the battle. However, once you kill this enemy, they are gone forever. We want to encourage players to find and hunt down as many enemies as possible. Uh, so what happens if you have killed all the enemies and you're still not strong enough for the boss? Well, get on a payphone in the game and dial number 333. Uh, this will take you inside the Mine Dungeon, which is a place that solely exists for grinding, as well as finding chests that contain new moves that are hidden and cannot be acquired through leveling up naturally. However, you can't just jump into the Mine Dungeon, defeating enemies and Talking to NPCs can unlock keys for the Mind Dungeon, which allows you to proceed. So if you want to max out your characters, you really have to hunt down every key in NPC, end quote. Uh, Y2K is still in development, but an early build is going to be playable uh, at the, in Vegas, so at the PlayStation Experience, like we were talking about earlier. So those lucky enough to be heading there will also get their hands on that. Uh, so we'll be bringing you more news on Y2K when we have it. And that is all the news yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's head on to those talking points, Kyle. All right, Tyler. Well, you know, I think uh, you've kind of got the gist of how we do things by now. So you should know what the first talking point is. 
as I, you do. I never do. That's why I always ask you. Know? I never what, do. What the hell, Tyler? I've been doing this for Come 50 on, man. and I still don't know. Jeez. <laughs> I'm gonna have to fire you. Uh, you might have to. Bring on, like, some crazy person to take your place. Do it. I dare you. <laughs> Do it. I dare you. <laughs> Alright, so crazy people, uh, mail us at podcast at the and we'll get you on to replace Tyler. You're gonna actually get emails. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully there's some crazy people <laughs> listening to this that know that they're crazy people, and then we'll have some interesting things to read, I guess, then, have we? That's very true. That could be entertaining, actually. <laughs> well, there you go. So, our actual first talking point, since Tyler doesn't seem to know what the hell's going on here, is announced release games we're looking forward to from the week. So, what are you looking forward to, Tyler? I'm looking forward to finding out who these new person is that's going to replace me. <laughs> no, no all seriousness. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, the Irregular at Magic High School. I'm hoping that that gets announced for the West. Um, is that being developed by Bandai as well? It is, Tyler. They're just making so many good games. They are, Tyler. Bring them all. I agree. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm excited about that. Hope to hear something soon about that coming over. Um, also, Citizens of Earth. Interested in it. I don't know how much I play of it. I watched the trailer. It looks interesting. Um, it all depends on the price. I don't know how much it's going to cost or if it's going to be free to play or what. Don't really know too much about it, but I'd like to know more. Um, also, the game I was just talking about earlier, Y2K, that sounds really interesting. I love uh, JRPGs, so bring them all. Um, what else? Of course, Sword Art Online Lost Song. I want to know more about that. I need, I need to. I need to, Kyle. I need to know more about that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I hope that uh, God Eater 2 Rage Burst comes here, because, yeah, I want it. What about you, Kyle? Yeah, you pretty much covered what uh, what we talked about that I was looking for. Um, sort of a My Lost Song, regular Magic High School. Um... That Wack 2K game kind of looks interesting to me as well, so kind of got my eye on that one. And uh, the only one that you did mention is Project Eva F Second. I just grabbed the first one not too long ago, playing Bon Appetit right now, so I, I guess I'm into rhythm games, and uh, <laughs> I'll have to get that one as well. Nice. Yeah. All right, so let's head on to the next one. What do we got? All right, well, this isn't isn't a talking point. It's also kind of a news point. Uh, I like to, you know, do a little separately here. So uh, I just wanted to go over the PlayStation Store top downloads for October 2014. So let's jump into that, and then maybe we can talk about it a little bit. All right. So the PSN charts have been released for October 14, both the U.S. and the European blog have posted theirs. The U.S. I believe covers all of North America, the U.S. Canada region, um, and Europe covers, you know, all the crazy territories that they support. Um, I haven't been able to find the Asian one, so um, if you guys can, or if anyone that's listening knows where the hell to find that every month, and when it goes up, throw us an email. Um, I'd love to know. <laughs> anyway, as expected, Minecraft, Tyler's favorite friggin' game, <laughs> shoots the number one in North America and Europe. Um, our other big release in Freedom Wars keeps giving you years of service, but still managed to hit number two in North America and number six in Europe with only a few days at it. And one of my not-so-guilty pleasures, Senra Configuration of Reverses, has bounced and spliced its way to number 5 in North America and number 10 in Europe. Nice. Other notables for the month include New Indie Nidhogg, which hit number 8 in North America, and Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment, which despite losing its number 1 spot, is still holding strong in both top 10 lists. So here's the list in full. I'm just going to read them out as quick as possible, so not to waste time. North America's top 10 is number 1, Minecraft. Number 2, Freedom Wars. Number 3, 
Sword Art Online Holo Fragment. Number four, Hatsune Miku, Project Giva F. Number five, Senran Kurura Shinobi Versus. Number six, Dead Nation. Number seven, Dragon Ball Z, Battle of Z. Number eight, Nidhogg. Number nine, Don't Starve, Giant Edition. And number ten, Metal Gear Solid HD Collection. As for Europe, they post a top 20 every month, so here's their top 20. Number 1 is Minecraft, number 2 is Need for Speed Most Wanted, number 3 is Urban Trial Freestyle, number 4 is Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, number 5 is Dead Nation, number 6 is Freedom Wars, number 7 is The Walking Dead Season 2, number 8 is The Walking Dead Season 1, Number 9 is Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment. Number 10 is Senran Kruger Shinobi vs. Number 11 is FIFA 15 Legacy Edition. Number 12 is Rayman Origins. Number 13 is Real Boxing. Number 14 is Earth Defense Force 2017 Portable. Number 15 is Child of Light. Number 16 is Farming Simulator. Number 17 is F1 2011. Number 18 is One Piece Unlimited World Bed. Number 19 is Borderlands 2, and number 20 is Don't Starve Giant Edition. Oh boy. Ah, yes. So it's obvious that some of those are, are influenced by sales. Um, the one off the top of my head that I know of is Hatsune Miku Project Diva F, that heroin sale. I know that. Not not that kind of heroin. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that uh, influenced the um, jumping of that to number four in North America for sure. And I'm sure some of those titles in Europe are on sale as well because there's no way F1 2011 should be in the top 20. <laughs> so yeah. What do you guys think of that? Let us know. Send us email. Yeah. Yeah, some good games in there. They normally always are. That's why they make the top list. That's right. It's either good games or really, really ridiculous sales. Yeah. <laughs> I want them to. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, a question. Absolutely, Tally. When you go to the Vita store. Yes. And you go to top downloads. Yes. Why aren't they updating it? I have no idea. Um, so annoying. <laughs> I I don't generally check that. However, I do frequent NeoGAF and pretty much read all, all the PSN thread stuff. So I know that every once in a while they seem to update it, and it seems if you bitch, they'll update it. But <laughs> other than that, it just kind of stagnates. They like kind of forget about it for months at a time, and it stays the way it is. And okay. yeah. It's, I don't know. Well, that's unfortunate because, I mean, they're all good games that are on there right now, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> like the top one right now is Killzone Mercenary, and I think Killzone Mercenary hasn't been the top in North America for a while now. Yeah, it hasn't. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's outdated, and there's a lot of things that they could do better with the store, too kind of inform us what's going on, what we should buy, etc. I mean, they already tell us what we should buy, but <laughs> what we should buy from something that we'd actually actively look at, like that, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what the hell they're doing. Hopefully they get that fixed. Hopefully somebody from Sony's listening and jumps on that. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, good list. Top ten. I've got... All of those are games except for Hatsune Miku and Dead Nation. I used to have Metal Gear Solid HD Collection, but I sold that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have, yeah, I, I think I actually have all of those games except for Minecraft. Because I think I have Dead Nation too. Or if I don't starve. I... I don't know if I claim that or not. I know I tagged the PS4 version. But I don't know if I tagged the Vita version. I don't know. Anyway, I know I could have had all of those games. Do you want to know a funny story? Yes, I would like to it's, know. It's not really funny, but it's actually aggravating for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's going to be funny for me. <laughs> okay, so don't starve. The PlayStation 4 version. Right. It was free on Plus. Right. So anyone that tagged it on there... 
eventually, when the Vita version came out, they could get it for free on the Vita, correct? Correct, the Monday. Okay. Well, I got a little eager. And when I saw that it uploaded or updated the store, it said it was fifteen dollars and I was I clicked on it and I was like, Alright, download it. And I was like, wait a minute, why is it charging me? I bought it or I got it on the PS4. And I was like, Arr, Arr. So I was like, God damn it, whatever. So I decided <laughs> to just buy it for a fifteen dollar price. Okay? Uh -huh. So then I saw the people saying how they got it for free and I was like, Okay, this is what the hell? So then I called Sony or PlayStation, and talk to their customer service, and the guy, I was like, telling him, the guy, like, so, blah, 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 telling him all the stuff that's going on, and he, he's like, I need to go get my manager, so I was like, oh my god, alright, so then I'm sitting there waiting forever, finally, the manager gets on, and he's like, see, the thing is, the PS4 is called Don't Starve, whatever it is on the PS4, I can't remember what it's called on that, do you remember? It's just, uh, Don't Starve, and then the other one's Don't Starve Giant Edition. Alright, so yeah, he's like, it's called Don't Starve on the PS4, and on the Vita, it's called Don't Starve Giant Edition. So those are two different games. So they're two different purchases. And I was like, no, they're not. I, they said that you get the PS4 version because of PlayStation Plus, and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, well, unfortunately, that's not how it works. And I was like, okay, can I have my money back? <laughs> so they're like, we can do that. So I got my money back, but I have not deleted Don't Starve off my Vita, so I can still play the game. <laughs> <laughs> and I got my money back, so I cannot delete Don't Starve unless I never want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my that, fun little story. That's pretty crazy, Tyler. Um, I don't know if that costs by... Thing is still kind of in effect or not? I don't know. Well, yeah, I, I saw know, people I know, tweeting about it, saying like, yeah, how they did well, it. Yeah, it, it's not. It wasn't like a a fuck up or nothing. It, it was an actual like legit thing. Like the the guy who made the game, I guess whatever, had decided that this is the way it was going to be, and that if you had the uh, PlayStation Four version, then you get the Vita version, which is the giant edition for free no matter what but what was i think happening was also people were getting the playstation 4 version update giant edition so like the dlc i think free with something by doing something so i think that was kind of the screw up and a lot of people were calling in trying to maneuver stuff with that so um, I think that might have been what kind of tainted your experience there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it was, I, I'm 99.99% sure um, that it was legit that if you had the PS4 version, you could get the beta version. So that might still be the way it is. So I, I don't know, but if you ever decide, you know, hey, I need to move, don't starve, you should check that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. One day, maybe I'll delete the star, and I'll be like, "No, I never have it again." <laughs> well, you, you could always just back it up to computer too, right? <laughs> that's probably true. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So that's all we got for talking points, right? Yes, it is, Tyler. All right, let's head on to that listener mail. What do we got? All right. Well, we actually have some listener mail, although it was an email that was tweeted at us. Which we're cool with, so if you want to do that, we're totally cool, and you can tweet at us anytime if we see stuff that you say, you know, this is a beta cast question, or for the podcast, or whatever, we'll make sure to include it, no matter when it's posted, um, it'll just be the next cast from when you see it, so if you want it on the cast, maybe a day that isn't Tuesday or Wednesday, post it, and then you'll be sure to get it on the very next one. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, our first one here comes from Dolo R. Lance at Dolo R. on Twitter, and he says, What do you see for the future in hashtag JRPG Vita? So, I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Tom? I thought hashtag JRPG Vita was Tales of Hearts R. It is and it isn't. I believe it was supposed to be a movement, kind of, not just a, like a one single game. So it's supposed to be, you know, bring JRPGs to Vita. And I think so, like, that's Tales just... of Hearts was only the big one that they kind of 
you know. Right. Okay. So you're headed with that. <laughs> I don't know. This is just a want. It's not what I actually see happening, but I want a a Final Fantasy to make it to the Vita and it be exclusive. Probably won't ever happen, but that'd be so awesome. <laughs> um, what do I actually see for the future of it? Um, I think, and this is also kind of hoping, but this one I could see happening much more likely than uh, uh, Final Fantasy, depending on how it looks on the PlayStation 4, um, is Persona 5 getting a Vita port. Because Persona 4 Golden did pretty well, and everyone loves it that has played it, for the most part, that I've heard. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would love for that to hit the Vita, and I feel like it would be a very good game to make it to the Vita. Crush you, Cal. I completely agree with that. I think that would be an awesome game to bring to Vita, and it would be something awesome to kind of put under that JRPG Vita moniker, so... If anybody out there is listening, <laughs> hint, hint. Um, also, another one that we've been kind of talking about quite a bit, um, the irregular Magic High School. It's not necessarily a classic JRPG. It's a little more action-oriented. Um, but I would love to see that one kind of, I, I guess you could say, pushed into that category and, and, and jammed down people's throats so we could get that over here as well. <laughs> nice. um, other than that, um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I know, you know, Japan's always churning out great JRPGs and whatever we're not getting, I'm sure we'd love to get as long as it isn't something ridiculous that, <laughs> you know, Western audiences wouldn't like at all. But I mean, we're doing pretty well with the booby games, and uh, <laughs> most of the ones that they've brought over so far with regards to JRPGs, as long as they get, you know, little exposure. Um, so I think they should just bring everything that's, you know, semi-good talent. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I definitely agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So I think that's uh, that's what we think for now. Of course, we can't say anything specific or, you know, can't bust out any hey this is coming and nobody knew it because we don't know so this is our hopes and we hope that it happens <laughs> all right moving on our next question is from rem at iz rem 27 on twitter and he asks did you find the borderlands to port a success or failure Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I would say probably a, su a success from a sales point, because I'm sure they sold a ton of Vitas, much more than they would normally if they didn't have it, and a ton of copies of Borderlands 2. But I also think that it wasn't the very best, because people that are really looking at the reviews and whatnot on the game probably stopped them from buying it because of how there was such like problems with it. And now it's updated. It's much better than what it was at launch. Um, but yeah, <laughs> people are going to buy it right away because they just want it. It's not going to be like, we're going to wait for reviews. We're just going to buy it right off the bat. But then, you know, you got that big chunk of people that are going to wait for that. So I think it's both. If it was an awesome game, um, like, nothing was wrong with it, and it was literally the exact same game as it is on the console, then I think it'd be a super success with no failure at all. Even hinted in there. <laughs> but we all know the problems that arise with the game, so it's kind of both, I think, personally. What about you, Kyle? Yeah, as you, as you noted, I think it depends kind of which angle you look at it from. Um, if you're looking at it from a you know, did it sell Vitas, did it sell units, blah, 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 kind of, you know, was it good for Vita at overall kind of thing? Um, I think so. Um, obviously, um, the Borderlands 2 bundles that they have out in uh, pretty much, I think, everywhere in North America <laughs> um, are pretty much the only way to get a new Vita, I think, right now. Um, in our 
area. So, I mean, how could that not be a success? Everyone you're selling, you're selling a copy of Borderlands with, and that counts. So, I mean, it's 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 good way to do stuff, and I think that Sony should take more of a bundle approach to some things to get some things out there because oh, yeah. there's some great bundles that they're missing out on. And uh, I think in that in that respect, you know, getting the, the game out there and getting more Vitas out there, um, they've done done well with it. Um, as for is the port in good quality, um, yes and no. Um, I think they've done well with what they have. I think the issue was time. So I think really had they had, you know, a couple more months, they wouldn't have needed, you know, as long as it took till now to get everything fixed up. Because, I mean, what they're doing now is they're going back and they have to do things to make it so it's patchable. And there's a whole bunch of other kind of things that have to happen now for, you know, every patch to be released and every little piece to be fixed um, that they could have done in a shorter amount of time had they been actively working on it, I guess, um, as a team and as something that was to be released, um, then it would be as it has now. Um, so where they're kind of piecemealing the fixes in. Um, so I think definitely if they, if they would have waited a little longer to release it, it would have been a better, um, quality port. And I think that they could have definitely made it more of a success, um, from a technological standpoint. But, um, from, from the whole sales standpoint, I think, I think it's done pretty well. Yeah. All right. I think we've <laughs> got that question answered. <laughs> All right. Now, here's kind of an odd, kind of not odd question, but um, Steve Jaworski, uh, one of our faithful listeners and tweeter adders um, there on Twitter, uh, at J-A-W-E-S-S-O-M-E on Twitter, um, asks us, well, says to us, um, he would love an update on the upcoming nuclear throne port by Bland Beer. So, I, I, <laughs> I kind of don't want to me- mention this, but I kind of do because, I mean, we, people want to know that it's still, you know, happening and all this stuff, but really we don't have any information. Um, if there was something new, we obviously would have posted on the site, and we kind of haven't heard anything more than anybody else has, so we're, we're waiting like everybody else is, and I think we're eagerly waiting yeah. to see what the hell is going on. I think it's really just uh, they're finishing up the PC version, and when that's all said and done, they'll start really slamming that PS4 and Vita version down. Yeah, as with most things, I think it's just uh, a matter of where their priorities lie and that they just kind of haven't got to a point where they can update us on what the hell's going on with either because they're working on, you know, other aspects of their business or releases. So, yeah, I agree with Tyler. I think it's, you know, we wait for them to catch up on their other stuff and work here about it. Yeah. It's and still coming, yeah. as far as we know. <laughs> yep, and hopefully it's soon. Because I guess it's really entertaining. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think that's all our emails or uh, questions we got, right? Uh yes, I believe so. It is awesome. All right, so let's head on to check this out. And this week, it's myself that I need, no, you don't need to check me out. I mean, you could if you wanted, <laughs> but <laughs> I like stop coming on to people on the video guys. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Don't listen to that guy. You can call me at... No. <laughs> I'm not going to give my number out. That'd be weird. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, check this out. Uh, the game I'm going to pick this week is... Uh, I think it it's okay to pick this game. It's kind of recent, but not... Too, I think it's three weeks old, four weeks old. It's Nidhogg. <laughs> it's a cheap you game. You can pick Nidhogg, Tyler. <laughs> I can pick Nidhogg? I'll allow it. Okay. Just once, well, maybe. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> If you hear the dogs barking, I apologize. Anyways, um, it's an awesome game. 
check out the review. It's one of those games that you can have so much fun with a random person that you're hanging out with, or your best friend, and you can have a battle. I was at work, and me and this girl, like, I was just like, let's play this game. She's like, I don't even know what this is. I was like, all right, simple, hit these buttons, stab me. And she's like, okay. And we were just laughing our asses off. And we were, because you can play the game on one Vita. So, I had to think about that. So, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Go check that out. Uh, so, yeah. That's it. Let's get out of here, Kyle. All right, Kyle. So, you can find all the stories we talked about on thevitalounge.net. Uh, we're all on Twitter, at the Vita Lounge. Uh, I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash loungeplay. We do lounge plays. We post up uh, games that are coming out soon. Um, we, I post the VitaCast, although I'm a little behind. I need a, I'm working on all the Extra Life videos that we did, and they are long. So my computer and YouTube are hating me right now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Come on, Tyler. <laughs> Get that shit done. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> but yeah, we, we post up lounge plays. Um, lounge plays are recorded at uh, on Saturdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, and 9 p.m. Uh, British summertime. Yeah, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they're still on. Who the hell yeah. knows anymore? Yeah, you never know. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, join the forum, thevitalounge.net slash forum. Sign up, join the conversation, introduce yourself. Just, yeah, there's a lot of game talk going on there and whatnot, so join in. Uh, we're on iTunes. Uh, just subscribe to us comment let us know how we're doing and that's it we are out bye hasta la fuego au revoir arrivederci um doma arigato mr. Roboto. <laughs> <laughs> it's sayonara you were looking for sayonara that's the one <laughs> <laughs> alright bye